Hey everyone, my name is John Hammond, and hey, before we get started, first of all, thank you so much for you tuning in, listening to this thing, and uh, especially to Integrity and everyone behind the Lead Up team for the Cybersecurity Conference and this event. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity and trusting me and letting me kind of ramble and rant for a little bit of time. So, uh, hey, before we get started, let's get the preface here. Let's kind of set the stage. This is a presentation titled Hard Truths and Unexpected Realities, Lamentations in Producing Cybersecurity Content. Now, I have to say, this sounds like a bad talk. This sounds like a bad presentation. And you're probably right. I kind of agree with you. What the heck am I doing? What is John doing up here coming out to talk about this stuff. Let me add a disclaimer. Let me add a footnote and asterisk here. Let me say this talk and presentation is going to be chock full of whining, complaining, and ultimately kind of just venting. Uh, I don't know. Maybe this is a therapy session for me to you. I don't know. <laughs> but we're here to talk about it, and I hope there might be some insight that you get out of this. Maybe it's just me complaining, and hopefully that'll be sufficient for a cybersecurity talk. Whatever. Anyway, I want to talk about a couple different things. I want to talk about how you as an individual, whether you're producing cybersecurity or not, or me or anyone else that is in the cybersecurity scene, how you compare yourself to all of the other incredible people that are in this industry, that are in penetration testing, that are in bug bounty, that are in ethical hacking, that do blue team stuff, that do defense, that do incident response, that do cryptocurrency shenanigans, that are all about artificial intelligence and machine learning and all of this stuff inside the cybersecurity ecosystem. And you and me, we're just kind of like one person. We're just kind of one fish part of the pond. Um, and how do we consider ourselves when we maybe assort ourselves in that array of people, where do we line up? How do we benchmark ourselves? And I think this is something, hey, sorry, before we move on, I'm not going to be using slides a whole lot. Hopefully I'll be able to reference that. Uh, maybe they'll just pop up here and there, but hopefully this is a free flowing video and you're just listening to me ramble. But I think this is especially evident in the world of social media, right? You're on Twitter. Maybe you're on Instagram. I don't know if you're on TikTok, Snapchat. Do you do do you use Snapchat for cybersecurity stuff? I don't even know. Uh, YouTube, right? LinkedIn, Facebook. Um, it's really easy to see the incredible successes of other people and what they're doing and what they're putting out there. And I I wanted to include this idea in the abstract of the presentation here. And they're like, hey, when you see other folks putting out some incredible research, some fantastic analysis, they've developed this new super cool tool and utility, a program that helps speed up workflow, whether you're doing reconnaissance looking for bug bounty, whether you're automating something, whether you're building an entire command and control or C2 framework, I don't know. I get really jealous. I don't know about you. I, I just kind of envy you. Like, oh man, they're in the limelight. They got the awesome, incredible success. And kudos to them. They're putting in the hard work and they're doing it. But you think to yourself, I'm trying to put in that hard work too. Maybe I haven't been able to kind of sing the praises and say, hey, look at all this cool stuff that I did out on the interwebs. Hopefully you're trying to do that, right? I would really recommend starting to go ahead and produce cybersecurity content. Just show your work. What you do, whether you're practicing on online war games, you're participating in a capture the flag, or you're doing bug bounty, everyone's already sharing those cheat sheets or those new utilities. Be part of that. And when you see other folks do it, sure, it's one thing to kind of applaud them and, hey, this is incredible. It's fantastic work. And you should be pleased and happy in their success because you can share that. You're in the same community. And while I struggle with that, it might very well be, it is jealousy, right? It is envy, but I hope that's a human thing that you feel just as well. I think what what I've heard folks say, and, and I probably take away as, I don't know, I try to take away anyway, is that you can't compare yourself to other people, right? You can't compare yourself to what people uh, show on Instagram, show on Twitter, because for one thing, hey, those are celebrating their highs, their successes, the incredible moments in life. And that's awesome. But you don't see the hard work. You don't see the grit. You don't see the determination, the long nights, the lack of sleep, everything that they're doing to put that work out. And you're doing the exact same thing. You just don't know it when other people get to have the trumpets and fanfare and all that pomp and circumstance, right? And if you can't compare yourself to other people and what they are today, then what can you compare yourself to? If you are trying to get that human nature benchmark or see your own progress, 
compare yourself to who you were yesterday. Like what you were doing just a bit ago and what can motivate you to do something new and better. And everyone is on their own timeline. Like you don't have to be, hey, coming out of the crib, like rocking zero days and dropping elite CVEs, right? You don't have to do it in a rush. There isn't a race. As long as everyone, as long as you get to the destination that you want, then you still succeed. I hope I'm hope I hope I'm trying to succeed. I don't know. Maybe this is the like highest, most joyous point in the talk and presentation. <laughs> Let me talk about another thing. Um, and I think this piggybacks well off of what we've already been discussing. When you see folks screaming and shouting and celebrating maybe cool stuff or just giving their hot take, you know, offering their opinion, their insight and their input on the Internet. Um, I have always been really hesitant to do that. I don't know. I just I, I think like, dude, no one cares for one thing. They shouldn't care. Like, I'm just a fella. I'm just a person here in the industry. I'm just hanging out. I want to have a seat at the table. I don't want to be like the head honcho at the leader, you know, the, the head of the table. I don't, I just want to be here with you, with everyone. And with that said, I hope that there is a semblance of, I don't know, even like saying the word humility makes it wrong, but like, I will proudly say, and I hope you can very proudly say, transparently in full honesty, you just sort of fall on your sword and you say, look, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> and I try to do that, I hope, but I make videos, right? I have a YouTube channel where there are literally thousands of caps captured moments in time where I am making a fool of myself. I'm being an idiot. I'm making mistakes. I'm running into walls. I'm hitting the backspace key like 70 times because I made so many typos and mistakes. Something goes wrong and I'll often feel like, look, I don't know what I'm doing. All these cool, crazy elite ninja warriors, cyber shenanigans, the wizards that are cutting through Ghidra and Ida and this low level stuff. I'm like, man, that is so out of my league. And I, maybe you feel like that just as well in some aspects of what we do in cybersecurity. I come to the conclusion, I'm a fraud. <laughs> like, man, I'm a loser. I am a security charlatan. And when we see people out on the internet, on social media or whatever, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Twitter, whether it's LinkedIn, whether it's Facebook, and they're given their hot take and they're given their opinion. Maybe you don't care. Maybe there are a lot of people that don't care. Maybe there are people that do care and they don't like it and they start to reply and comment and like quote tweet and say, yo, this is awful. This is such an awful take, dude. You should rethink your life. You should rethink existence. You should rethink, etc. cetera. I, I don't know. I, I, for one thing, don't want to walk that tightrope. I don't know if you do. With that said, one learning lesson that I hope comes from that, and while that is a hard truth of feeling like I'm a security charlatan, I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know if you feel like that is that no one knows what they're doing. No one is an expert in cybersecurity because there can't be, there are so many different fields, so many different aspects, so many different subcomponents of what we do. Again, whether it's bug bounty, pen testing, ethical hacking, et cetera, I, I enumerated all those things earlier. There's no way. It's, it's wild how we have sort of this man-made field that is so ginormous that we cannot comprehend all of it simultaneously. So, well, I might have my strengths. You might have your strengths. I absolutely have my weaknesses. And when people give their hot takes or when you give your hot take, you give your input, your opinion, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I don't want to have that like anxiety and dread and looming self-loathing whenever that crosses my mind anymore because it's a community. It's a contributing uh, family. And that's, I think what we have to come to, right? Is that, Hey, they're learning. I'm learning. They have their strengths. They have their weaknesses. I have my strengths. I have my weaknesses. We have this discussion. We have this conversation. We have this sharing of knowledge and insight and input and opinions, whether they are wrong or they're right, we're doing it. And that's a good thing. I might feel like a security charlatan, but maybe you do too. <laughs> I don't know. I I hope to dance and kind of play with that idea a little bit more. Um, but I, I hope there are some good sound bites and some nuggets in there for you. 
So let's carry that thread even more, though, because now we've gotten to the point, hey, I'm a content creator. Maybe you're a content creator. There are other content creators, others that have a semblance of influence. God, I hate that word, right? In the community, in the cybersecurity realm. Uh, I don't know, because I often make fun of the fact, hey, if you're an influencer, you're a cybersecurity influencer. It sounds so stupid. It sounds so dumb. And in a way that it is, right? But I've, I've had hard conversations with people that I would consider a mentor to me. And I don't know if there are folks that you consider a mentor to you. I'd, I'd love to be a part of that. I don't know. Hey, maybe there are plenty of others that you consider someone that you learn and gain a lot of insight and advice and wise words of wisdom from. And this individual told me, you are an influencer. Even if you don't want to be, even if you think that you're not, even if you hate that word like I do, it's because, hey, but by the nature of being a content creator, you have given and shared knowledge and insight and created things that have been a resource for the rest of the world, for everyone, for the community, for this whole industry. And with that comes a little bit of responsibility and a certain amount of ownership that you can give that input and insight and your opinion and hot take and people will listen to it. People might actually, they see that as a given way to think or a way to structure your security stack or a way to go about hacking or the methodology for finding bugs. It's wild for one thing. It's extremely scary. And with that, you or I or any other content creator, again, hard truth and, and reality, you feel like you have to at some point. You feel like you have to keep putting stuff out into the ether. And now this might be, again, if you're a Twitter fellow, if you're on TikTok, if you're on Snapchat, I don't know, or, or YouTube, right? In my case, I, for one, feel like I am a slave to the algorithm. Like I have to feed the machine, the, the, the monster behind YouTube and that, Hey, people want, or they're asking for, and you can see the comments. I'm sure, again, if you do something similar, you know, Hey, can you do a tutorial series on how to reverse engineer Stuxnet or something, right? Can you do something where you, can you make a video on finding a zero day? Can you show us how to solve all of the technological problems in the world? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm using hyperbole, but there are those requests and those things are like, John, hey, I really liked or I really loved when you did this specific series and you were showcasing this kind of thing. Will you ever get back to that? I'm like, oh, yes, I should. I know that I should. And you might get that same feeling. I I want to get back to that thing that I really enjoyed and had fun with, but I have all these other things that I really like and I really enjoy because that's the problem when you love and have a passion for this thing. And you probably have a day job. You probably have like a life to attend to and family and friends that you want to spend social time with. And you should probably like, hey, get enough sleep so you can function during the day so you can do your job. But if you need to get all those other things done too, maybe you should like actually feed your brain, probably eat something during the day. I'm notorious for that. Don't eat breakfast. Forget to eat lunch. Wait, hang on. I should probably shower. I just rolled out of bed and went straight to my keyboard. <laughs> I don't know if this is the same reality that maybe you find yourself in, but I feel like I do. And that can get into the conversation of burnout. That can get into the conversation of an absolutely unmaintainable grind and hustle. God, again, words that are like a, a little cringy and how they're used, but when you don't have a lot of the obligations and responsibilities that you know will come further in life, um, Maybe you take advantage of the fact that you can work those late nights and, I don't know, stay up crazy late and keep hacking away. Uh, I don't know. Maybe go without food. Who knows? I don't know. The point that I was getting back to here, and I'm sorry for this tangent, is when you feel anxiety and dread and that you have to feed what the world wants and what everyone is asking of you, I consistently fail at this. I drop the ball. And 
there's no way for one person to do it. And maybe again, you feel this if you're a content creator or if you just are trying to make tools for the community. People say, whoa, you had some incredible success with some project that you released some time ago or you found this a huge, ginormous bug bounty and now you're like shot into the stratosphere of cybersecurity and infosec fame, if there even is such a thing. And you now must come down from the heavens to present a new incredible bug bounty or tool or video course, etc. It's something that I struggle with because sometimes you just can't. And sometimes it's a matter of telling the world, I can't. Maybe that's knowing your failures, knowing your weaknesses, etc. But or you get to it eventually. I don't have a resolution for that one. I don't have an answer. I don't have the silver lining or something to kind of pivot it back to a positive point. That is absolutely a hard truth and unexpected reality. It's like, man, I, I'm i just not doing what I wanted to do at the pace that I wanted to do anymore because it, there's so much else. But those other things are just as important, if not more important in some cases. So that's a bad one to leave off. I don't know. I don't know how we're going to end that one. Let's move on to the next thing. So here's another tidbit in creating content, right? Being able to share education and knowledge and stuff that you learned, stuff that you find interesting and fun and cool. And again, you're very well likely doing this. I'm speaking to you, content creator, already well-established, veteran or new and budding, and you're trying to grow this thing more. There will come a point and a time where you have a sense of, of your standing and you've gained an audience or a, a audience is not the right word. I hate that. Oh, my viewers. No, my fans. God, I hate that. It's people that enjoy and, and like to hang out with me virtually through a video on YouTube. Um, there comes to be a point where you have enough exposure and enough sort of, uh, I don't know, community that companies and organizations and businesses uh, will want to leech from that. And, and that's I'm, I'm not saying that in a way that's meant to be pointing fingers or throwing shade. It's just that people want to be part of the cool kids club, right? So if this person, this content creator, this other influencer, right, is putting out great stuff, like, oh, wouldn't this be a sweet opportunity to help promote our product? Let's roll some advertisements. Let's do sponsorship. That's what I'm alluding to here. When you can roll sponsorships, and when I am, am rolling sponsorship ads and promote videos and showcasing some of the cool work of other great companies, etc., it's a balancing act because I've seen people say, I've literally had people tell me to my face and I've seen it on YouTube comments, wow, there is a shark, there's a stark and sheer contrast when uh, a content creator gets now the ability to roll these advertisements and work with sponsorship opportunities where their content completely changes and they lose what was their craft and their art and their original sense of production and producing content. I am absolutely terrified of that. And it, I, to a point, I think I've already done that. I've already fallen on that. And I don't know if others may think so, or if you listening in might think so, or if you've done that with your own work or your own, hey, producing tools, again, bring this to a different case. You might be asking for, hey, GitHub supporters where they can give some funds and, and promote and share, or just even you, you ask for some monetary gain in the work that you do, whether it's a Patreon, whether it's a buy me a coffee, whether it's kick, literally anything, right? Are you a sellout? Am I a sellout? Are there selfish gains in wanting to be, again, human nature, but just compensated for the work that you do, for the stuff that you produce? I don't know. Like when I look at people, when I look at other incredible successful creators and workers and people, again, in the industry, and they have made a fortune, they have made a killing, they have set themselves up because of what they've been able to do, what they've been able to create, whether it's, I don't know, again, incredible tooling, whether it's just notoriety, whether it's courses, whether it's videos, whether it's something, whether they just can rake in sponsorships and ads and do it right, that looks like an attractive, successful thing. But are you hurting the audience and the viewers that wanted to learn from you? I don't know. I have a fear of that. And 
even the last month, just trying to produce videos, I've been slammed with sponsorship opportunities and I want to crank them out and get them over with so I can get back to the stuff that I like and enjoy. And it's a pain sometimes to roll with that, do those promos. But my worry is that now I'm going to have back to back to back to back content, videos, et cetera, that are all sponsored videos. Whether I'm interviewing someone or just chatting about what they're doing and what they're up to, I don't know. I don't want it to be a shill. I don't want it to be a sellout. If I tried to pivot back and make some, hey, grass is greener me- messaging with this, I don't know what exactly the resolution is on this one either, because I hope it is a balancing act and I hope we can find that chord. And I want to ask you, maybe here's a call to action. What's the appropriate way to still gain some financial income and revenue for the stuff that you love and stuff that you enjoy and what you pour yourself into studying again, creating tools, showcasing your work, dropping cool new bugs, CVEs, et cetera. That's one way to do it. <laughs> Maybe bug bounty's got it right. That's why I'm hanging out here, folks. I don't I'm cheesing. I'm cheesing. But those are my lasting thoughts. Does sponsorship make you evil? Does accepting money from folks supporting you or even just trying to, hey, showcase more of their own incredible work, is that wrong? Is that bad? Uh, Maybe it takes away in some ways, but maybe it adds to it in other ways. Lamentations. (laughs) All right, here's another uh, last thought to, to kind of bring to you. When you start to do this thing, whether you create content or whether you, uh, again, find bugs or do penetration testing or ethical hacking or anything in the cybersecurity scene, uh, it's fun and it's exciting and it's exhilarating. It is so, so fulfilling. But from all the things that we've already talked about, my goodness, is it tiring and the burnout is real. The lack of sleep is real and it will catch up to you. And when it does, it hurts. I know. Yeah. Uh, so I, I have conversations with friends and folks and people that have considered, how do I get out of cybersecurity? How do I get out of creating content? How do I stop? Why do I feel like I need to keep finding bugs? Why, hang on. Do I need to keep being a pen tester or keep up with the threats and adversaries and all these APTs that I'm fighting against with my DFIR consultants? I don't know. Where's the exit ramp? Because this has taken a toll on me after however many years, maybe 15, maybe 20, maybe however long you as an individual might be in the industry. Or if you just start to realize and think this whole cybersecurity thing, it's not for me anymore. Maybe it was, but I'm going to go do something else. Can you do it? Like once you get in, can you ever get out? I know that it can be done absolutely without a doubt. But if you are, let's change the structure again, content creator, influencer, I don't know. Let me, let me ask you, think of your favorite, absolutely hands down what you admire and like your maybe favorite individual that is in this education sharing space that does this training, whether it's content creating and videos, courses, et cetera, et cetera. What if they just fell off the face of the internet, didn't do anything else anymore, never responded to literally anything, just wasn't online, didn't tweet, didn't share any videos, just left their online presence. How would that make you feel? Would you be upset? I don't know. Maybe, I'm sure you wouldn't care. Maybe people just don't care. Maybe there's a handful of people that might or don't. But if you multiply that across their audience, whether it's 5,000 people, 50,000 people, 400,000 people, 2 million people, I don't know. That's another weird anxiety, dread, self-loathing thing because um, in the hot take opinion thing of how you consider yourself measured against other people. Do you care about other people's opinions? The traditional, I think idea is no, you, you shouldn't, you don't, you don't have to, don't bother. It'll hurt you. It does strange things to you, but in a 
game of creating content and trying to hey grow a channel, grow an audience, grow a community, grow a viewership. Opinion of other people is kind of important. So what if I just straight up stopped? I don't know. Food for thought. And a question to ask, uh, will I, I'll, I'll ask myself, will I ever be able to just up and quit? Just say no, no more, done. Once I get in, is there any ever way to get out? I sort of miss obscurity and maybe some other um, content creators are again, maybe notable. I've, I hate all this talk, sorry. The weirdest like self-centered, narcissistic venting <laughs> therapy session ever. Thanks Integrity for letting me do this. Let me let me air my dry, my dirty laundry. <laughs> What do you think? If you're a content creator, just if your favorite fella, just now nah, I'm done. Would that feel like a role model has let you down? Would that feel like your mentor is can no longer be what you thought they were? I don't know. Once you get in, can you ever get out? I think pivot this to the positive side. Yes. And the notion of, hey, so many anxiety and dreads of trying to feed the algorithm you could say, I'm done. Throw your hands up and say, that's it. I'm, I don't want to, I'm not anymore. I can't, I can't. Um, yeah. Do you think so? If you have that opinion, are, are you a security charlatan? Are other people who differ in their opinions from you, are they a security charlatan? Are they worried about what you think or what other people think? Are they trying to offer their own input and insight into the world, into this vortex, into this ether of everyone trying to discuss and chat about what we do in cybersecurity? How are they doing, though, when they're not on the internet? What about their social, what about all those low points in life that they aren't sharing and expressing and putting out in the world? Uh, how, how can you compare? Do you? I, I really, really struggle with this. This is a mental ambivalence in like six different directions. Um, and I don't know if those are things that you ever think about, but those are things that I think about. And I don't know if other content creators or tool developers or folks in cybersecurity tend to think about, but I hope being able to chat about them for just a little bit, maybe voice that might be a breath of fresh air. If it's just surfacing problems and that I don't know a solution, or maybe I know a semblance or a little string or thread to pull on of a solution. And some of these, I hope I could offer just that. And maybe there's some motivation in there. I, I wanted to tell you, be your own person. Do the stuff that you love. Do the stuff that you like. Say no when you need to. Don't burn yourself out. Stop comparing yourself with other people. Compare yourself against yourself. And offer your input and insight because that has to be how we kind of grow and continue and better the industry and everything that we do. I don't know if that's a good ending, but maybe that's the ending. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening to me ramble and rant and vent for however long this was. But I hope there was some good nuggets in there. And I know it wasn't a technical talk. I know it wasn't, hey, slinging code or writing zero days and hitting up vulnerabilities. But something to think about when you see other content creators or you do content or you produce things or you just uh, want to be a figure in the space. Food for thought. Thanks so much, everyone. I hope you enjoy this talk and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.